you got to resist the devil, man. Like, the Bible tells us to resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Now, it's no easy way to put the devil down or your enemy down or somebody that's destroying your life. It's no easy way to tell them, I don't want to be your friend anymore. You just tell them. Literally, you just tell them, I don't want to be your friend no more. Or you resist them, ignore them, block their cause, whatever it may be. But it's no easy way to put somebody down and tell them that you do not want to bother being a friend anymore, bro. See, I'm going through a dilemma here. And I tried to fast for three days for God. And um, it just never, it never really seems to go through anymore, right? It's because I started to care about the opinions of other people around me, right? Like, I, I wouldn't want my mother to say, hey, you being mean or whatever. Because a lot of people like to say that I get mean when I go on a fast or when I'm trying to lift myself spiritually. But that's not the case, bro. I don't be mean. I just tell you the facts. And the facts and the truth doesn't care about your feelings or emo emotions. That's why a lot of people don't like the word of God. Because the truth is the truth and it doesn't care about your feelings and emotions. A lot of people want to walk around the truth just to make themselves feel better. As opposed to bending and uh, submitting to the truth and then becoming better. You get what I'm saying? You, you would rather feel better as opposed to submitting to the truth and actually becoming better. So a lot of people don't like you because you speak the truth. A lot of people won't understand you because you speak the truth. You get what I'm saying? It's no easy way to put the devil down. There's no easy way to put the devil to shame. When Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, right, and he was presented or the devil came to him and he was tempted by the devil, what was Jesus saying? Was Jesus being his friend? You feel me? Was Jesus sitting up there talking about, nah, bro, maybe tomorrow or maybe, no, no. Jesus was giving them the straight facts. You should not tempt the Lord your God, right? When he, when he, when, when the devil told Jesus to throw himself from the mountain, I know you suffering. He said, I know you suffering. Just throw yourself from this mountain. You can end all the suffering. And and if the Lord is real, then He'll send you allegiance of angels, angels to to save you, right, from meeting your death or whatever. And Jesus told him, man, you can't tempt the Lord your God. <laughs> you feel me? Even when he was telling him to turn a, a stone into a loaf of bread, Jesus told him, you should not live by bread alone, but every word that is seed of out of the Lord's mouth. So certain things, you you got to just resist the devil and he shall flee from you, bro. There's no easy way to put the devil to shame. It's no easy way to do it. A lot of people hate me today. A lot of people don't like me today. A lot of people constantly stalk and watch me today because I don't answer their call. I may block. A lot of friends of, or people of the past, a lot of people who don't respect the walk that I'm going down, you know, they keep on tempting me with old ways and old things. You got to get those people out your life, bro. You have to. And there's no easy way to do it. It's only one way to do it, and it's actually to do it. You telling yourself maybe tomorrow, or I don't know how to do it, or I don't want to hurt their feelings, or I don't want to see me. That's how the devil gets you, bro. The devil presents himself as an angel of light. Does it mean that he's an angel of light? Does it mean that he's a good angel? No, he just looks good. You feel me? The devil is evil at heart. So understanding who your enemy is, you understand that this facade that he puts on to make it seem like, oh, he's going to be mean to me, that's just to keep you around. He's an evil guy at heart, bro. You feel what I'm saying? People will keep you around them, noticing that they ain't no good for you, noticing that you want, you got bigger, better dreams, you're going places, and you got this light. They will keep you around them knowing because they don't, they not going nowhere, and they know they ain't going nowhere. So they want you to be around them, bro. They want you to stay stagnant with them, bro. They want you to suffer too, bro. This is just what it is. This is the world we're living in, bro. It's characteristics of people, or it can be the demons inside of people. It don't matter what, what what it is that's driving these people to do these things. You have to separate to elevate. You do. Now, I'm not here preaching prosperity, right? And I'm not talking about worldly prosperity and mere material possessions and all that stuff. I don't care about none of that. God don't care about none of that. And I don't care about none of that because that's of this world. The scriptures tell you, bro, 
that God knew you before you was even in your mother's womb. Meaning you're not even of this world. You're not from this earth. When you think of Jesus and how Jesus walked on earth, Jesus didn't have a lot of material possessions, although he could have. He's the son of God. He can have anything he want in his life. He didn't, though. He was moving from town to town, city to city, preaching the words in the gospel, right? Saving people, healing the sick, doing the things of the kingdom because he knows that he has a palace in heaven. Why would he be trying to build a life here? You get what I'm saying? So when we think about Jesus Christ and if we're supposed to be just like Jesus Christ, we're, we're supposed to be poor. We are. So when I talk about prosperity, I'm not talking about prosperity in this world. I don't care about you getting the million dollars or becoming somebody or being the most famous next top singer or the next top model. Or I don't care about you being the biggest football player or the biggest thing here. Because that's not what matters in life. What matters is the things that you do here, treating people how you wanted to be treated, doing great deeds here so that people can see your good deeds and look at the Lord and be like, God, you are real. And when I talk about that, that's healing people. That's the things of the kingdom, bro. So when I'm talking about prosperity, I'm talking about prosperity in God. Prosperity in the life to come, right? Earning a reward in the life to come. If this world is handed over to the devil, and the devil is the, the king of this world at the moment, then you got to think about it. Whoever made that dollar bill owns that dollar bill, and this is their world. It's almost like a child. It's almost like childhood things. Like, let's say you was in school. And in school, y'all came up with a group, a gang. In this gang, y'all got to abide by certain rules. Right? And the more you abide by these rules, the more you're submitting to the person who actually made the rules. Right? So you're submitting to the leader of the gang. You get what I'm saying? So why would I abide by these life rules? Or why would I play by these life rules? And why would I try to use their money and go along with their systems unless I'm submitting to the one who made them. You feel what I'm saying? The kingdom of God is at hand, bro. Jesus Christ is real. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and that's the only thing that matters in this life is spreading that word right there. Getting as many people to believe in that word right there so they don't go to hell for eternity. So they can be forgiven for their sins and doing the Lord wrong so they may get a second chance to actually live. God is a good God, and it's the gospel that people need to be preaching, not prosperity gospel. I don't care about a prosperity in this world, right? When I tell you to separate, to elevate, I'm talking about elevate spiritually. You get what I'm saying? So, like I said, man, when you got to get rid of these devils in your life, there's no easy way to put it. It's not a, oh, let me go around their feelings, and I'm not trying to be mean. They go label you whatever they want to label you, bro. The chosen ones are often misunderstood for that reason right there alone, because they love God. The rest of the world is going one way and you trying to go the other way. A lot of people are not going to understand you because you're going that way. I'm not going the way y'all are going. I'm going this way. You're not going to understand this walk. You can't give me no advice on this walk because you're not going this way. That's why we read the word, because there's people who actually walk this path. And we can follow in their footsteps. We can get the encouragement from the word and videos like this and one another. But for people who's going that way, they won't understand people who's going this way. And if you're trying to go this way, then you cannot longer, you can no longer go that way. God don't like lukewarm people, man. He tells us that he will spit you out of his mouth. But let me read you a scripture real quick, man. About the rich, man. God don't like the rich, man. Revelation chapter 3, 14. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds. I know that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich. I have acquired wealth. I do not need a thing. But you don't not but you do not realize that you are a wrenched pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. People who, who acquire the wealth and they, they say, I don't want nothing or I don't need nothing in this life. I have everything that I always wanted. God has blessed me with this money, this material possession. I don't need anything. Those people are blind. 
They don't know the true will of the Father. They don't know that this 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 is a part of this world and this is the world that's fallen. And it's not a part of his world. It's not a part of his will. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's what those scriptures tell us. You know? That being said, man, that's the end of this video. Like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff. I'm out. Peace.